so next important sector is the e-commerce sector which is also very very important and uh, which is witnessing a high growth rates e-commerce sector however there are also several problems associated with the we can say regulation of the e-commerce sector so majorly the dominant uh, dominating or dominant e-commerce platforms they are controlled or we can say they are multinational platforms so right so they are uh, refusing to come under the regulation of the indian government so there are several problems in that Uh, good morning students welcome back to plutus as right so today we will discuss about the service sector uh, it is uh, we can say last of the three sectors that uh, an econ economy will be divided into so service sector this is also very very important area uh, also for prelims and also for mains so try to focus right so service sector it is very very important because after the i mean earlier we have studied just after the independence the agriculture was dominating agriculture was dominating the scene so because of that reason we have called indian economy at that time as the agrarian economy agrarian economy however uh, after uh, several decades or uh, some decades the service sector has uh, started taking lead in contribution in terms of contribution to gv uh, gdp and gva so the share has been continuously started increasing so especially after the 1991 economic reforms contribution of the gva further further increase and now we can say easily say it is the most dominating economy uh, when it comes to the contribution of gdp so its contribution is way ahead when we compare it to the other two sectors so its contribution is a whooping 66% to the country's gdp with estimated 9.1% uh, in the gva gross value addition so if we see whereas if we see the growth of agriculture sector it is hovering around 3 to 4% right so in this way uh if we see the service sector its growth is very healthy so in terms of gdp it is contributing very highly but, but however there is a structural problem though it is contributing contributing very highly to the gdp the employment if we see the employment component the growth in the employment that is not up to the mark in the service sector so though the contribution of gdp uh, contribute contribution to gdp is increasing the growth is not uh, translated into creation or generation of employment so this is one of the major problems with this sector so there is no income distribution in this sector income distribution is not there so we can see income distribution both in agriculture sector and to a large extent in the uh industrial sector also the low, where the low skilled jobs are there 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 will be income distribution so here the service sector it is absent so this is one major problem with the service sector however it is contributing in terms of growth and also it is contributing a lot to the uh in the in terms of the gdp right so if we see the key components in the service sector whatever we are considering So the sectors are information technology and the software services, uh, and in fact, this is leading the growth uh, in the service sector. So it is the more most prominent sub sector in the service sector. Next is business process outs outsourcing. So often these two are clubbed, and it is known as IT and BPO services. Next are financial services. So whatever the banking and insurance services are there, they all come under. in this area next is health and medical services or health and healthcare and medical tourism education and training telecommunication and internet services tourism and hospitality right so further some other components are entertainment and media retail and e-commerce 
so you can understand the e-commerce it is the newly emerging area uh, and it i mean it is becoming one of the dominant players in the service sector also you can add new financial services also however they can be also be considered in the uh, financial services so we are seeing many of the fintech services uh, i mean due to the changes or we can say advances in the technology we are seeing a lot of fintech services and the new financial services new banking services so all these will comprise in the financial services only so if we see the contribution to gdp and the gva so according to the latest data available we have already seen it is contributing to 66 to 66% to the gdp right so the growth rate if we see 9.1% uh, it is it is its growth rate is estimated so in this way uh it is contributing huge hugely to the gdp and also for the growth rate growth rate right majorly this growth is driven by contact intensive services like travel and tourism etc right so employment generation in terms if you see uh it is creating lot of employment in india so employing an estimated 28% of the total workforce so here you can understand the disparity <laughs> uh in the contribution to gdp is 60% however if we see the employment it is employing approximately 28% of the workforce so this is leading to some disparity we will understand it when we study the employment and un unemployment issues so skilled workforce the rise of the service sector has driven the need for skilled workforce so there is lot of uh, demand for skilled workforce in this area because the workforce need to be highly skilled highly skilled along with the we can say english education also english language education so the person or worker has to be highly skilled right so because of that government of india has also started programs like skill india mission etc to provide uh, this sector with the required skilled personnel or skilled manpower right now we will understand some of the indexes or growth parameters through which we can understand better uh, about the sector right so first in that is uh, service pmi pmi is purchases uh, managers index so basically pmi is generally used for uh, understanding a trend or growth in a particular sector so the popular pmis are there is manufacturing pmi and also there is service pmi right so they these are two are there so by observing these uh, pmi purchaser purchasing managers index we can understand the growth trends in a particular sector so if we see the services pmi so it is after the covid 19 dip you can see here in the image so again it has rebounded and we can see a healthy growth healthy growth in the the purchasing managers index right so from this we can understand that though the sector has taken a hit during the covid-19 uh, pandemic and uh, associated lockdowns so after that once the lock lockdowns are lifted uh, we can say this is the second uh, lockdown period so after so wherever there are lockdowns the sector has uh, taken some hit however after that it it has recovered we can say healthily so this is about the purchase purchasing managers index with the term in terms of uh, service sector next indicator is bank credit if we see the bank credit so bank credit to the service sector has been witnessing steady growth so what we can get from the growth in the banking sector which means if the service sector is taking actively taking loans from the banking sector which may, that means that the sector is witnessing growth so whenever there i mean the sector sector is witnessing growth so why the service sector takes loans if there is demand so to meet the demand the new new capacity has to be created so to create that capacity uh, the service sector seeks loans from the banks so if by taking uh, by observing the bank credit 
to the service sector we can understand the growth in the sector so credit bank credit to the sector is also increasing so according to the uh, rbi data the growth rate is approximately 22 to 20, uh, 22 22% it is hovering uh, between the year on year growth rate is 20 to 22% so this shows that uh, the bank credit growth is very high to the uh, in the service sector right so here through this uh, we can say graph you can understand the growth to the service sector so it is hovering around 22 it is hovering between 20 and 22 percent we can say it is a very healthy growth rate in the bank credit right. next is uh, we will understand the trade component or we can say imports and exports component and export component when it uh, when we see the services All right so if we see the exports in the sector so growth trajectory if you see it is witnessing a significant ride, uh, rise uh, in the exports uh, exports from the service sector in recent years so the figures are figures for two, uh, 2023 they are keeping the uh, estimates of uh, from the service sector at 333 billion do dollars so it repre it represents a growth rate of 7.88 percent when compared to the previous year so this is a very healthy growth rate very healthy growth rate in the exports from the service sector top contributors if you see in the exports segment information technology and bpo it is leading the exports in the service sector so these segments uh, remain the uh, dominant force accounting for nearly half of the service export right so they are nearly accounting for the half of the total service exports from the country other key segments if you see travel transportation insurance financial services communication etc the uh, these are also contributing to the exports in the service sector right so this is about the exports so try to remember the figures about the uh, export both growth rates and the component real figures about the uh, export so you can apart from answering the questions in prelims examination you can use these figures in the mains examination also right. now if we see the imports from this sector uh, there is a moderate rise in the imports so the imports are accounting uh, approximately 288 billion dollars so approximately we can say 290 billion dollars right so growth rate is moderate All right so when we compare the imp uh, imports and exports the growth rate of exports is more than the growth rate of imports which is a very good sign so for exporting also we need some imports however the difference between the exporting growth rate and uh, importing growth rate is positive which is a good sign for the country which means we will be having more and more uh, surplus when it comes to uh, foreign trade in services so that is a good sign for india right leading categories if you see in this area i mean in terms of imports uh, the major uh, categories are uh, similar to exports it and bpo services they figure prominently in imports so both in imports and exports the it and bpo services they are the major component other categories are travel royalties and license fees financial services etc so they, these are also contributing to the imports right so trade balance if you see especially in the service sector we have a surplus uh, thanks to the it and the bpo industry it and bpo industry thanks to this we are having a surplus in the uh, service trade balance so india enjoys a positive trade balance in services so if we see in 2023 the trade surplus is approximately 45 billion dollars right so this indicates that the value of service exports is higher than that of the imports so because of this sur uh, surplus only in the service sector we were we are able to 
we can say slightly minimize the uh, export gap or we can say deficit trade deficit in the secondary sector that is uh, import of goods import of goods we have lot of trade deficit in the secondary sector in terms of goods like we import lot of crude oil and we import lot of gold and we also import now it is the import of electronic goods electronic goods the major category in this sub category in this electronic goods is mobile phones right so these are the major imports from other countries so they are taking very valuable a uh, foreign exchange reserve from the country so because of higher value of imports in these categories the trade deficit is very high in india trade deficit is high so whatever the trade deficit is there in the import of this segment the goods we could slightly minimize it or reduce it by having surplus in the service sector especially uh, we call it as invisibles so by surplus in this area we could we can say slightly reduce the trade deficit in the goods right. so this is the uh, story about the trade in the service sector right so another category if you see another important indicator that is foreign direct investment into the service sector so two uh, two classes before, uh, before we have studied about the fdi in india so we have seen all the aspects now we will briefly understand how it, the flow of fdi is there i mean when we in terms of service sector so the highest FD, annual fdi flow ever recorded in india was 83.57 billion dollars in 21 22 there has been a slight dip in 23 24 right so april to december if you see it is hovering around 18 billion right so despite the overall decline service sector contributes to attract significant fdi so whatever the fdi is coming the service sector it is attracting the most of the uh, foreign direct investment into the country right so in the 2022 23 uh, according to the latest data so in the 17 billion dollars component the service sector uh, attracted 7.1 billion dollars equity flows flows representing roughly 8.5% of the total fdi received right so if we see the uh, top sub sectors which are receiving foreign direct investment in the country the major ones are financial uh, banking and insurance services so here into these sectors the fdi flows are very healthy next are non financial and business services and it bpo these are also attracting fdi flows into the Country. right so if we see the top investor countries into india which are uh, investing through the fdi singapore mauritius united states netherlands and japan so these are the top 5 countries which are investing in india in terms of fdi for in direct investment right so try to remember these facts also so this is about the major indicators through which we try to understand the performance of the service sector we have seen service P pmi bank credit growth to the <coughs> service sector we have seen imports and exports into the uh, of the service sector and we have also seen the flow of fdi fdi into the sector so now we will try and understand some of the sub sectors of the performance of the some of the sub sectors of the uh, service sector so first such sub sector we are going to study is the tourism and hotel industry right so as you all know it is very one of the important components of the service sector right so we can see positive signs after the uh, covid 19 so recovery in tourist arrivals we can see so following the significant drop in 2020 21 only because of covid 19 and associated restrictions foreign tourist arrivals uh, uh, they are on the rise once again so the government's visit india year this program or campaign it is showing positive results 
with estimates suggesting uh, over i mean foreign uh, tourist arrivals the footfall uh, 0.31 million uh, foreign tourist arrivals in 2023 similarly apart from foreign tourist arrivals there is domestic tourism boom also so domestic tourism witnessed a robust surge driven by increased disposable income and the growing middle class so these are contributing to domestic tourism boom also so estimates suggest that over 310 million do- domestic tourist visits in 2022 so apart from that the hotel industry also picks up so occupancy rates in hotels are improving particularly in leisure destinations so according to the reports the hotel occupancy is around 55 to 60% in 2023 right so it is estimated that the hotel and the tourism and hotel industry will reach uh, around 60 billion dollars 60 billion dollars by 2028 right however there are still challenges when it comes to hotel and the tourism industry that is global economic uncertainties these are there so whenever the global economic uncertainties are there the visit of the foreign tourists it will reduce apart from that bat, uh, infrastructure bat, uh, bottlenecks are there so infrastructure is yet to be increased properly in india so this also remains a concern apart from that sustainability of tourism industry that is that is also is there so these are some of the uh, concerns related to tourism industry in india however the government has taken several initiatives to improve the service sector in india especially the travel and the tourism industry so some of the schemes you have to remember they may be asked in the examination so you have to remember the schemes so first scheme is nidhi scheme it is national integrated Des- database of hospitality industry right right it is a collaboration between the ministry of tourism state governments and the union territory administrators next scheme is sathi scheme it is system for assessment awareness and the training for hospitality industry right so it is launched by the uh, quality council of india next is rcs udan 3 so it is regional connectivity scheme udan 3 so it is initiated by the uh, civil aviation ministry to enhance the regional air connectivity next is lgsca tss it is a credit guarantee scheme a uh, loan guarantee scheme for covid affected tourism service sector so it is administered by the national credit guarantee trust company so it is, it provides credit guarantee for the loans advantaged to the tourism sector right next is a free tourist visa scheme the government has initiated this scheme it is to attract the foreign to- tourist visits to india right so these are some of the schemes started by the government to increase the tourist arrivals into india right so next another important sector is real estate sector in the service uh, service sector overall service sector right so if we see the residential market i mean uh, we can also call it as the rental housing so if we see the residential market uneven recovery is there so we can see a patchy recovery in the uh, rental market in the especially in the tier 1 cities right so uh, so the tier 1 cities they are showing some signs of improvement with the stable prices and the gradual rise in sales volumes in some segments particularly in the mid segment catering to owner occupancies right so still there are challenges they persist so affordability remains a major concern due to stagnant incomes and rising interest rates so apart from that a large inventory over uh, overhang of unsold units from pre- previous years they continue to put dow- downward pressure on the prices so on one side the capacity housing capacity has been created as you all know so there is other side there is lack of demand lack of demand so because of that the prices are falling down so you very well know about the residential market in india so there is a demand 
if you see the demand there is a demand from the lower middle class lower middle class and the poorer sections for the affordable housing so there is demand from these two segments for the affordable housing so in this area there is shortage even in rentals and also when it comes to purchasing of the houses in this segment there is shortage of houses at the other sector uh, other segment is rich component rich class component so here high residential houses have been created which can cater for the rich class people so but there is no demand in this area so demand is lacking in this area even in terms of renting and also in terms of purchasing so this is the mismatch uh, that is there in the uh, rent i mean housing category or we can say the residential market in the country so on one side there is demand from the middle class and lower middle class people uh, however the supply is not there in this segment whereas if you see the rich class uh, that higher area so the i mean residential facilities have been created there however there is no sufficient demand in that area so this is a huge dilemma for the problem huge problem for the government so we have to somehow we have to bridge this uh, we can say disparity in the housing sector so we have to create more affordable houses both for renting and for owner owning for the lower middle class and the poorer sections right so overall performance if you see the uh, uh, real estate sector or rental housing sector so limited growth is there uh industry reports suggest that the growth rate uh, growth rate is hovering around 5 to 7% for the overall uh, real estate sector in 2023 24 this indicates slow recovery compared to the pre pandemic growth rate right so there are certain measures taken by the government to improve the sector so if we see those uh, initiatives by the government first one is policy interventions and the financial support this is there so initiative such as housing for all and atmanirbhar bharat they are providing impetus to the housing and finance sector all right so similarly there is rbi's permission to lending institutions for a total moratorium for 6 months during the pa- pandemic period also there is infusion of funds for uh, non banking finance companies housing uh, hfcs and uh, mfis microfinance institutions for further lending to the housing sector similarly there is a focus on the demand side drivers and the subsidies so interest subvention schemes under pradhan mantri awas yojana credit linked uh, subsidy scheme urban so this uh, provision is also there next is also the creation of affordable housing fund providing liquidity for valuable viable growth right next is liquidity support for liquidity support and financing schemes have been initiated by the government so special liquidity liquidity facility of rbi supporting the housing sector during the pa- pandemic this has been taken up next uh, infrastructure projects and a smart city scheme has been initiated by the government right so this project smart city project it is aimed at improving the overall opportunities for real estate sector and encouraging uh, investments into the cities next there is a plan to build 100 smart cities it is and also going to uh, we can say work positively positively for the housing sector next another uh, efforts are uh, focused at affordability and interest rate red- reduction so these are the some of the schemes or we can say measures initiative initiated by the government to increase the real estate sector in the country especially the housing sector right next is uh, we will try and understand about the it uh, and the bpm or bpo industry so if you see there is a strong growth in the it and the bpm industry so if we see the uh, financial year 2023 24 figures so it is the sector is estimated uh, to be accumulating the revenue of 245 billion dollars showing a continued growth right 
so it is also a export powerhouse india remains the global it leader in it exports with estimates suggesting a total of 194 billion dollars of it exports in the financial year 2023 right it is also creating lot of jobs so the industry is a major source of employment providing jobs to over 4.5 million people as of 2023 right so if we see the key drivers in the industry first is digital transformation so digital transformation is taking place so the glo- global shift towards the digitization it has fueled the demand for the it services across the spectrum next is cloud adoption so the growing adoption of cloud computing it provides indian companies with a cost effective and scalable advantage next are emerging technologies like technology like artificial intelligence blockchain technology and big data analytics uh, they are making the indian companies even more competitive right so these are these are the uh, aspects about the it and uh, bpm industry however there are challenges and opportunities are also there global uncertainty uncertainty so this is one of the major challenges you know very well the it and bpo sector or bpm sector is very sensitive to the global fluctuations so geopolitical tensions and economic slowdowns they could potentially impact the demand of the it sector this know this we know very well similarly competition from the countries offering similar services needs to be addressed so the china is also competing with us for a share in the it exports there are other countries like uh, east asian countries they are also competing with us right so these are the some of the challenges that are there for the sector right so next important sector is the e-commerce sector which is also very very important and uh, which is witnessing a high growth rates e-commerce sector however there are also several problems associated with the we can say regulation of the e-commerce sector so majorly the dominant uh, dominating or dominant e-commerce platforms they are controlled or we can say they are multinational platforms so right so they are uh, refusing to come under the regulation of the indian government so there are several problems in that and also <coughs> several aspects in the management of the e-commerce platforms for example whether they can own the goods supplying companies or not only they have to provide platform or whether they can be allowed to store some goods and supply to the sell uh, they can sell on their own platform or not etc there are several concerns so we will see all those concerns when we discuss the main topic for now we will uh, try and understand the trends in the e-commerce sector so if we see the trends increased penetration and market growth so this we can see the growth are uh, growth rates are very high they are uh, they are in double digits uh, for the e-commerce sector right so government initiative to boost the digital economy coupled with the growing internet penetration and smartphone adoption they further fueled the e-commerce growth in india especially during the lockdowns so this sector has seen a lot of boom because the physical movement of the people has been resp- uh, restricted so people were increasingly ordering goods through these e-commerce platforms so the we can see we can also see expansion of e-commerce sector into new segments <coughs> such as grocery fresh product produce and general merchandise attracting a bo- uh, broader customer base so we can see many of the e-commerce platforms are emerging uh, they are spreading into various segments like meat segment like uh we can say now we can say country delight it is serving uh, milk and uh, fresh coconut water etc i mean it is increasing widely increasing right right so emerging categories like fashion grocery and general merchandise they are expected to dominate the e-commerce market in the coming future right so next is digital solutions adoption by msmes so msmes in the beginning they are they were unable to compete and uh, make their presence felt in the larger platforms like amazon uh, flipkart etc however with the adoption of technology by these msmes also so they are uh, 
they are making their presence felt in the e-commerce platforms right so these msmes they are increasingly adopting digital solutions like e-commerce and e-procurement to enhance revenues margins and the market rate so didops uh, digital adoption has uh, enabled msmes to access larger marketplace uh, deal directly with suppliers and the scale up business etc right so geographical expansion also we can see the e-commerce business has expanded significantly in rural india due to increased smartphone penetration internet adoption and the rising purchasing power so we can see a huge spread in the rural area of the digital e-commerce market also right so if you see the government initiatives government uh, initiatives like digital india U- upi unified payments interface and uh, the government e marketplace gem they have also contributed to the growth of e-commerce platforms in the or e-commerce segment in the india apart from that one district one product initiative and the tribal india portal they have also facilitated the onboarding of small businesses and artisans onto e-commerce platform so these measures have also helped to onboard the small businesses and the individual artisans into the e-commerce platforms another very very important initiative is open network for digital commerce ondc so this is a very important initiative by the government it is the government initiated e-commerce platform right so uh, as i have already told there are problems with the multinational e-commerce platforms like amazon flipkart etc so the indigenous and the small businesses retail store uh, managers they are unable to uh, venture into these e-commerce platform however this one open network digital commerce platform it will allow the small retail shop owners also to onboard the e-commerce platforms right so it is to democratize the digital payments enable interoperability and bridge the bridge bring down the transaction cost and empower the sellers from the remote areas to participate in e-commerce so this is a very very important measure by the government to democratize the e-commerce segment for everybody right so remember these aspects important aspects right next another important area or segment sub segment of service sector is that is digital financial services so this se- segment or sector sub sector is also su- uh, seeing a lot of growth due to adoption of te- adoption of technology etc right so acceleration of digital adoption so emerging technologies and innovative solutions they are accelerating financial inclusion and democratizing access to financial services right so india's strong foundation provided by the jam trinity that is jandan aadhar and mobile trinity apart from that upi and the regulatory frameworks they have spurred the digital financial services in the country right so fintech adoption rate in india is at 87% right so substantially higher than the global average of 64% right so this is the significant when it comes to digital fintech in the country apart from that there is rise of neo banking platforms so the number of neo banking uh, banking platforms and the global investments in the neo banking segment has increased consistently consistently so these uh, neo banks uh, neo banks or new banks they operate entirely on online plat- platform credit uh, catering to a digitally savvy uh, demographic demography i mean youth segment especially providing easier access to financial services so the mobile wallets mobile banking solutions and digital lending etc all these are being made possible by the neo banking services right these platforms they have facilitated financial inclusion for msme segment and unbanked customers also right so if you see the government initiatives in the digital banking arena so uh, the government has promoted the digital banking solutions with 75 digital banking units across 75 districts announced in the budget 2022-23 right so these uh, initiatives aim to extend the banking solutions 
to every corner of the country especially in the underserved and unserved areas next is introduction of central bank digital currency so digital currency it is also making rapid progress so the central bank rbi itself has started a new digital currency so the introduction of cbdc central bank digital currency offers various benefits such as reducing the operational costs fostering financial inclusion and boosting innovation in payment systems so rbi has has launched pilots of cbdc in both the wholesale and the retail segments known as the digital rupee wholesale and the digital rupee retail respectively right so this pilot aims to enhance the efficiency in interbank markets and the retail transactions with plans to gradually expand the scope of uh, based scope of this digital currency currency based on the feedback right so apart from that there is focus on digitization of documents also so digitization of documents has played a pivotal role in boosting the digital financial services by ensuring safety online verification and improved accessibility and fraud detection right so all these efforts are we can say uh, changes are there in the digital financial services also right so try to remember this area also so this topic is also important not only in terms of prelims but also in terms of mains exam right right so these are the some of the aspects i wanted to cover in the service sector uh, i hope uh, mostly i have focused on the uh, we can say day to day issues only i did not focus on the past events because most of the questions in the service sector especially we can expect from the day to day happenings only so because of that reason i have focused on this segment only the uh, latest events of segment right now we will see a question from this area uh, now we will see a question that is asked from this uh, area service sector the question is on e-commerce platform so question is asked in 2022 question is based on the e-commerce platform only so the question is with a re- reference to foreign owned e-commerce firms operating in india which of the following statements is or are correct right this is the question right first statement is they can sell their own goods in addition to offering their platforms as market places so this is a uh, incorrect statement the law the present law or guideline about the e-commerce platforms it says that they cannot uh, i mean the e-commerce company which is providing a platform a foreign e-commerce company which is providing a platform it cannot sell its own goods on the platform because it it may lead to monopoly and it it is i mean the platform may prefer its own goods so because of this reason the facility of the platform selling its own goods has been we can say not allowed for foreign e-commerce company so first statement is a incorrect statement next is the degree to which they can own big sellers on their platforms is limited yes this is the correct statement so they can own the e-commerce platform company it can own the big sellers uh, who are selling on the same platform but there is a limitation they cannot own uh, the shares in a selling company for more than a certain limit so this limitation is there so for example uh, the platforms like amazon uh, flipkart even the share majority of the share of the flipkart is taken by a foreign company so these platforms cannot sell their own goods right so however they can own uh, shares to a certain level in uh, companies which are selling their goods on the platform for example amazon is a e platform company it cannot sell its own goods on the platform however there is a we can say subsidiary or a company cloudtail india india so it sells products its products on uh, e commerce platform amazon so the amazon the e commerce company holds a certain share in this cloudtail india however that particular we can say share of the amazon company should not reach uh the limit prescribed by the government right that is there so statement 1 is incorrect statement 2 is correct so correct option is option b 
only state statement two is correct, right? So try to know more about the present regulations, or we can say the guidelines. Guidelines about the uh, governance of e-commerce company also they are also important, right? right. So this is it for today. Uh, thank you, thank you for joining the lecture. Uh, see you next time. Until then, have a good day. See you next. Time.